Hi everyone, welcome back to another discussion. For today, we're going to discuss about dengue hemorrhagic fever. Yes, if you want to know more about that, stay tuned. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Neil Gavin. I'm a registered nurse and I do have a degree in medical surgical nursing. I create nursing educational content to help nursing students with their studies. If that's something that you are interested in, consider subscribing. If you're already a subscriber though, thank you so much for your love and support. I see you. I upload my nursing educational content two to three times in a week, so don't miss that out. Subscribe now. Hit that notification bell so that you will be the very first to watch my newest uploads. Also, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and share with your friends because that would really happen know that you like to see more contents like this. Without further ado, let's do this. One of you guys requested our topic for today and like I said, we're going to discuss about dengue. We're going to discuss about pathophysiology, diagnostics, treatment, signs and symptoms, and also nursing intervention. In order for me to do that, I will switch back to my PC and I'll see you guys in a bit. Hi everybody, welcome to our formal discussion on dengue hemorrhagic fever, pathophysiology, symptoms, diagnosis, treatment, and nursing care management. You guys, this is one of your requests. So we're going to be starting discussion of our communicable diseases. To start this series, we're going to discuss about dengue. So I want you, I encourage you guys to check out the description box for helpful links. I'll be putting it there for your reference, all right? I'm going to share to you our objectives for today. We're going to discuss about pathophysiology, symptoms, diagnosis, and treatment nursing care management of course we're gonna have a short quiz let's begin some patients with dengue fever go on to develop dengue hemorrhagic fever a severe and sometimes fatal form of the disease dengue fever is an acute febrile disease caused by infection with one of the zero types of dengue virus it is a mosquito-borne disease caused by genus Aedes uh, Aegis aegypti dengue is also known as a break bone fever hemorrhagic fever dandy fever, infectious thrombocytopenic purpura. Dengue hemorrhagic fever is a fatal manifestation of dengue virus that manifests with bleeding diathesis and hypovolemic shock. These viruses are related to the virus that caused the West Nile infection or what we call the yellow fever. Now we're going to discuss about pathophysiology. Very simple. Simply hand on that then. The pathophysiology of the dengue hemorrhagic fever includes initial phase. The initial phase of DHF is similar to that dengue fever and other febrile viral illness. The virus is deposited in the skin by the vector within few days virinemia, lasting until fifth day of the symptoms to show. Initial phase natin to introduction or yung exposure natin sa ating vector. Hemorrhagic symptoms. Now, shortly after the fever breaks or sometimes within 24 hours before, signs of plasma leakage appear along with the development of hemorrhagic symptoms. Next, after nito, ano yung madadevelop ng pasyente mo? Vascular leakage. Vascular leakage in these patients patients result in hemal concentration and serious effusions and can lead to circulatory collapse. The final stage of your pathophysiology is what we call the progression. If left untreated, DHF most likely progresses to dengue shock syndrome. Brush up lang natin, there's actually four stages of your pathophysiology na ating dengue. Now let's discuss. Classification of dengue hemorrhagic fever depending on what? Severity. When we talk about severity, meron tayo mild, moderate, severe. Mild. Client may manifest fever with or without petechial hemorrhage. Moderate. Client may experience high fever but with less hemorrhage and no progression to shock. Yung ating pinaka third uh, degree fear o yung ating frank type. Sudden onset of fever may occur with severe hemorrhage which is accompanied by an abrupt decrease in temperature, shock, and termination of recovery. Now, grading of dengue hemorrhagic fever and dengue shock syndrome o ating DSS according to 2020 guidelines. Naalala mo yung dengue may apat tayong grade doon, may grading system, di ba? Naririnig mo suspekta grade 1, grade 2, grade 3, grade 4. Ano yung grade 1? Fever accompanied by non-specific symptoms like anorexia, vomiting, and abdominal pain. The only hemorrhagic manifestation is tourniquet test and or easy bruising. Ano yung tourniquet test? Rebuhin natin to. This determines the capillary fragility. It is a clinical diagnostic method to determine a patient's hemorrhagic tendency. This test is performed by inflating a blood pressure cuff on the upper arm to midway 
airway between the diastolic and systolic blood pressure for 5 minutes. The results are considered to be positive if more than 20 petty K per square inch are observed on the skin in the area that was under pressure. Grade 2. Spontaneous bleeding plus manifestation with grade 1. Now, usually observed in GIT or mucotaneous. GIT, gastrointestinal tract, or yung mucotaneous natin, yung mga naglunose bleed na. Tawag mo ng grade 2 ang yung pasyente na may dengue kapag may spontaneous bleeding ka na, meron ka ng epistaxis dyan, nagbabalingoy-ngoy na yan, o meron ka ng mga GI bleeding, plus yung manifestation natin ng grade 1. Next, grade 3. Presence of circulatory failure as evidenced by rapid weak pulse, narrowing of pulse, pressure, or hypotension and cold clammy skin. So these are the signs and symptoms na masasabi mo na kapag nakita mo sa pasyente mo, ah, grade 3 na itong dengue nitong pasyente to. Grade 4, profound shock with undetectable blood pressure or pulse. Ito yung mga palpatory. For all four of the above, plus evidence of circulatory failure manifested by, ano ano yung mga manifestation mo? Na meron kang profound shock, meron ka ng rapid weak pulse and narrow pulse pressure, less than 20 millimeters of mercury or hypotension for age, and cold clammy skin and restlessness. Now we're going to discuss about diagnosis and treatment. Laboratory criteria for the diagnosis of dengue virus may include one of the following. Una, dengue virus isolation. Isolation of the dengue virus from serum plasma leukocytes or autopsy samples. Next, immunoglobulin titers. Demonstration of the fourfold or greater change in reciprocal immunoglobulin or IgM antibody titers to one or more dengue virus antigens in impaired serum samples. Immunohistochemistry. Demonstration of the dengue virus antigen in autopsy tissue via immunohistochemistry or immunofluorescence. Next, polymerase chain reaction. Detection of viral genomic sequences in autopsy tissue serum or cerebrospinal fluid samples via PCR. Next, complete blood count. Huwag malilito you guys. Uh, these are some of the laboratories that you can expect a dengue patient may be advised to do. Okay? Complete blood count. In DHF, there may be presence of increases hematocrit level secondary to plasma extravasation and or third space fluid loss. Ano pa? Decreased platelet count. This test confirms dengue. Kasi nga, di ba nga, tinitingnan mo kapag nagsisibisi ka, platelet count. Okay? So, kailangan malaman mo yung normal values. Ano ba yung normal values natin? The normal number of platelets in the blood is what? 150,000 to 400,000 platelets per microliter. Kamalilit to. Ano nga ulit ang confirmatory ng ating dengue? Platelet count. CBC. Test natin for dengue is what we call the GIAC test. Now, the test involves placing a fecal sample on a GIAC paper and applying hydrogen peroxide, which in the presence of blood yields a blue reaction product within seconds. All right, medical management that then. The management of DHF is actually simple as long as it is detected early. Early detection nga po ang pinaka mainam na panglaban natin sa dengue. Una, oral rehydration therapy. Oral rehydration therapy is recommended for patients with moderate dehydration Duration caused by high fever and vomiting. IV fluids natin. IVF administration is indicated for patient with dehydration. Yes, ito na may mga mild to moderate, ma uh, mild to severe type of dehydration. Blood transfusion and blood products. Patients with internal or gastrointestinal bleeding may require transfusion and patients with coagulopathy may require fresh frozen plasma. Oral fluids. Increase in oral fluids is also very helpful. Avoid aspirin, you guys. Avoid aspirin. As Aspirin can thin the blood. Warn patients to avoid aspirins and other NSAIDs as they increase the risk for hemorrhage. Nagbibleed ng pasyente mo, bibigyan mo pa ng aspirin, shoot ka, batukang ka to So, kalma ha, wag magbibigyan ng aspirin sa ating mga dengue patients or NSAIDs. Next, clinical manifestations. Symptoms which usually begin 4 to 6 days after infection and may last up to 10 days. Now, what are these symptoms that I'm talking about? Okay, mild symptoms muna tayo of dengue can be confused with other illnesses that cause fever, aches, and pains or a rash. The most common symptom of dengue is fever with any of the following nausea, vomiting, rush, aches, and pains. Meron na tayo um, eye pain, typically behind the eyes, muscle joint, or bone pain. Now, any warning signs, symptoms of dengue
get typically last two to seven days. Most people will recover after about a week. Now, nursing management natin. Ano mga nursing management na dapat nating tandaan, you guys? Una, blood pressure monitoring. Measure blood pressure as indicated. Monitoring pain. Note client report of pain in specific areas whether pain is increasing, diffuse, or localized. Vascular access. Maintain patency of vascular access for fluid administration or blood replacement as indicated. Medication regimen. There must be a periodic review of the medication regimen of the client to identify medications that might exacerbate bleeding problems. Fluid replacement. Now, part din dito yung managing nose bleeds. Elevate position of the patient and apply ice bag to the bridge of the nose and to the forehead. Now, you might want to put the patient on Trendelenburg position to restore blood volume to the head, okay? Now, ready na ba kayo? Ito na tayo sa ating short quiz. I'm gonna give you 5 minutes to answer 10 item questions. Alright, let's do this.
kumusta yung exam natin? Nag-enjoy ba kayo? Sagutan na natin to ha? Alright, let's begin. Question number one. Which of the following is responsible for spread of dengue? Ano to? Aedes aegypti. Aedes mosquito. Letter C. True or false? Symptoms of dengue usually begin four to six days after infection. Is this true? So here is true. Alright. If left untreated, DHF most likely to progress to what? Hypobolemic shock. Number four. The nurse is caring for a patient who is receiving treatment for dengue. The nurse knows that in order to restore blood volume into the head, she should place the patient in what position? The answer, Trendelenburg position. Number five. This test confirms dengue. Confirmatory test ng dengue. Lahat ito ay test for dengue, pero isa lang ang nagko-confirm. Ano yon? Decreased platelet count. How long is the incubation of dengue? Ilan to ang sagot dito ay? The answer is one week, seven days. It is characterized as fever accompanied by non-specific symptoms like anorexia, vomiting, and abdominal pain. The only hemorrhagic manifestation is positive tourniquet test and or easy bruising. Ano to? DHF grade 1. This test is done to check for occult blood in the stool should be performed on all patients suspected with dengue virus infection. Ano to? GIAC test. Letter D. Occurs shortly after the fever breaks or sometimes within 24 hours before signs of plasma leakage appear along with the development of what? Ano to? Hemorrhagic symptoms. Nalala mo yung degree of severity natin? Ito yun siya. Number 10. True or false? If left untreated, DHF most likely progresses to dengue shock syndrome. True. Alright. So you guys, that was our short quiz. I hope you guys enjoy that quiz. Let me know your score on the comment section below, okay? Now, once again, thank you so much you guys for watching. I hope you learned something. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more nursing educational videos. So I'll see you again next time. You have a good one. Thank you so much you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one. Help me grow my channel. Are you ready here? You might as well subscribe. Hashtag Team cool Talk. Give this video a big thumbs up and share with your friends. Let me know what you guys think. Put them down in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to check out the other playlists I created for you by putting the links on the description box. Or simply click the second button right here. Let's connect. Follow me on all my other social media accounts. Everything is at Neil Gabby. I'll see you again.